Hey guys, good afternoon. Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Bridgie. How you guys doing today? I hope you're doing well. Thank you very much for stopping by. And I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that reached out regarding my last video uh, that I posted yesterday. Um, just snippets of my uncle's um, funeral service. Thank you so much for your prayers and your kind words. I really appreciate it. God bless you all. We will not die before our time in Jesus' name. Thank you. So, guys, I'm sharing with you a story about um, Dr. Chuba Okadigbo. I don't know how many of you remember Dr. Okadigbo. He was um, a politician in Nigeria, a very astute one as, at that. And then that's his picture there. He's late now, but he was um, one of the most prominent politicians from eastern Nigeria when we were growing up. Dr. Kadigbo had two doctorate degrees uh, from universities across America before he was 34. So he was very, was an erudite scholar, well known. He was a senior president at some point, and he also ran with um, uh, Buhari during their election campaign in um, when he ran against, the first time he ran against um, Obasanjo, I think that was in 20, 2003. Uh, he ran under why Obasanjo was running in PDP. He was running AP, APC or APP, as they call it, as they call it that time. Anyway, that's Dr. Chuba Okadigo. I really, uh, growing up, I admire him a lot. Uh, that was when Nigerian politics had some sort of uh, substance before all the trashy things they are doing now and all the people they put him to run for offices now, touts everywhere uh, they were not without their own faults they were still corrupt but at least there was some substance and just hearing dr kadibu speak alone he had a very good command of the english language and i really admired that so dr kadibu is late as you all know he died um a while back in 20 uh, 2003 he died after a campaign in kano um where he went to campaign with uh, Buhari. So, the news is that his son, his son, one of his son, died in 2018. His name is Obiajulu Okadigo. He was in the U.S. and they say he died from a cold-related ailment. He was only in his 20s. He had studied in the U.S. and he was working and living in Maryland. And suddenly the boy just died which was very, very sad. And that was in 2018. Pharaoh Okadibo is the eldest son of Dr. Okadibo. And um, the news just reported that uh, Pharaoh sadly had an accident in Abuja and he didn't make it. And his friend posted, uh, someone posted this on Twitter and said, this is how Pharaoh left. God rest his soul. And somebody there replied, it's a lie, which Pharaoh can't be true, which is usually, you know, when something like this happens, it's so sudden, the person wasn't ill and is a young person, uh, it's usually something that people will they'll struggle to believe. And then the person um, confirmed that um, Emeka Okeke is a person confirmed that um, it is true and it happened this morning, that's Pharaoh Okadibo. Now, they didn't give much details about what happened. They just said that he was involved in an accident. And they did show the images of the car that he was in. And I will show them to you in a minute. But, I mean, this is really, really sad because I think their mother is still alive. And she even had to go to the U.S. when the brother... Obiajulu passed in 2018 to go and arrange for the funeral of, of that of that one. I mean, it's the most terrible, the most traumatic thing that you don't even wish on your worst enemy to ever happen for a woman to bury one child and to bury another one. Don't forget that her husband had previously passed. So I just can't imagine the trauma and the pain that uh, Mrs. Okadibo will be in at the moment. Anyway, Pharaoh was driving on Saturday, they said. 
in Abuja and you can see that's his car there, the white car, and he ran into that truck. Um, the family have not really, really disclosed any information about this, but it seems to me like the, the truck is stationary. I might be wrong, but it looks like this truck was stationary and just that image alone. Oh my God. Very, very sad. So he didn't make it. So a lot of people have been paying condolence and President uh, Buhari is one of them. Like I said at the beginning of the video, uh, his friends with their late father, because they ran together, they were in politics together. So Buhari uh, issued a statement via his spokesman, Femi Adeshino, in Abuja, saying that it is very sad to lose such a promising young man with so much potentials and passion for youth involvement in the social political development of Nigeria. Mm. He said that uh, Pharaoh, uh, at a very early age, queued into the vision of a better Nigeria, not just for the privileged, but for all and sundry, which uh, he shared with his father. And the father was born running mate in 2003. Hmm. He also said that the nation will miss a firm believer in the necessity for people to work in collaboration with government at all levels to achieve the better society we all wish for. And he prayed for the family and friends and associates that God should give them the fortitude to bear the lost. So you can see some of the images there. That's the car totally wrecked. Totally, totally wrecked. The front of the of the car is totally wrecked. I mean, there's no way somebody would have been in this vehicle and they will make it. We don't know what happened, uh, but the news just says that uh, Okadigbo's eldest son was involved in an accident in Abuja and he didn't make it. So those are the images that you are seeing there. It is usually very, very sad for people to die before their time. It is not always a good news. It's always something that you... I mean, I was, I was, I saw a motivational uh, speaker. You, got, you guys know her. Riwari Pekin was this morning saying that sometimes people don't appreciate what they have because we are focusing on what we, we want or what we think we need without appreciating things like the simple gift of sleeping and waking up. Look at that. Just look at that car. This is totally beyond repairs. It's squeezed. So life is a gift. Honestly, with everything that's happened in the past in the past one year with the pandemic, 2019, 2020 has taken so many people. So many. I, I don't think I know one person who has not lo lost a loved one, a friend or a colleague. I mean, I was talking to someone a few days ago and they were telling me how so many of their colleagues died in the hospital where they were working. Or where they work in the U.S., people that you just go to work with, all of a sudden they are gone just like that without any, you know, no illness, nothing, just because of the times that we live in, the pandemic and everything. But um, we that are still here, we need to just appreciate God, irrespective of whatever challenges that we face. We need to just thank God for the fact that you are alive today, you are breathing, you've got your breath. There's hope. So, yeah, when you see things like this, it just, it kind of puts life into perspective for you. I've, I have a different outlook to life now since last year. The way I see life now, with my own personal loss as well, and, you know, everything that's happened all over the world, and, you know, so many stories that we've heard and seen, the people we know, the people that we love, that have gone, it's just made me appreciate life more, and not to focus too much on material things and, you know, money and chasing this chasing that just to take a minute to breathe and thank god to thank god for life to thank god for good health to thank god for you know opportunities every day being able to meet your needs even if everything is not rosy but you are still here and you are standing because uh, now who died, now you finish show. According to Rewari Pekin on that post today, say, as long as I never write R O I P for your picture, you still get hope. So 
it's really sad um we pray that god will forgive him his sin and um may he rest in peace and the family especially the mother i don't know if he's got other siblings because i was trying to look it up and i didn't see any other i just pray that you know god will console the family so that is all I have for you guys today and um, stay with me this week. I am going to start doing my live videos uh, from the middle of this week. So make sure that if you have not yet subscribed that you do so and be sure to turn your notification bell on. Some people ask me when do I do my live videos. I don't usually have a fixed time for it uh, depending on my time and availability. I just um, sometimes I plan it sometimes. I just do it when I'm, I'm free. So make sure your notification bell is turned on. And um, we pray for the family of uh, Okadigbo, Dr. Chuba Okadigbo, that God uh, will console them and he will grant them the fortitude to bear this massive, massive loss. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching. I will speak to you in my next video. Please, whatever you do, be kind and think that um, this life we are only here temporarily some point we too we are going to go have that at the bottom of your mind have, have that at the back of your mind and always keep that in mind let it inform your decisions every day the way you relate to people the way you speak to people the way the right direction of your life is going let it always be in the bottom of your mind that may god grant us long life we are not going to bury our children we will not die before our time. We will live long and fulfill our destinies in Jesus' name. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching. Subscribe, and I'll speak to you in my next video. I love you. Bye-bye.